to play under review. I'm your host, the X513. As you can see, we're doing something a little different today. One thing I wanna make note of is mental health is important. Been having a tough time today, so I decided that I was gonna go out and do a couple of things to help relax and ease my mind. So decided to do something different today. We are here to talk about Tobin Rope once again, Tobin Rope Part 2. It's gonna be a little different this time. You know, normally I've gone over a script and you know, I've had a script to go to if I needed it. This time I'm not gonna have a script. We're just gonna talk a little bit about him. And as I'm talking about him in my edits, I will make sure to have some of the details of his career up. In my part one, I had discussed his NFL journey. He played for the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. So today I'm just gonna have more of a casual conversation talking about when he was playing in the CFL and when he was playing in the AFL. The CFL is the Canadian Football League, while the AFL is the American Football League. He played in the CFL for three seasons, and he also played in the AFL for another three seasons. When he played in the CFL, he played for the Toronto Argonauts, and when he played with the Argonauts, like I said, he was only there for three seasons. But within those three seasons, he had a pretty big impact. I think he's one of a few quarterbacks that I believe threw for over 4,000 yards and I think like over 30 touchdowns. That list is short and he's on that list. He also came pretty close to winning a championship in the CFL. He was able to guide the Toronto Argonauts to the, I believe the game before the championship. So they were in the playoffs. I could be wrong. He could have played in the championship. I believe that they lost right before they got to the CFL championship for the Great Cup. Even though he didn't win like the, the big thing in the CFL, he still had a lasting impact on the Argonauts in my opinion because when he first stepped on the scene with the Argonauts, he was able to guide them to their first division championship and they haven't had a championship in like 25 years. Another fact that I remember, I think that when he finished his career in the CFL, he finished with the highest passer rating in CFL history, if I'm not mistaken. I think Warren Moon, matter of fact, is number two. Uh, I know I had a video about him before, but I think Warren Moon is number two uh, as far as pass ratings, and Tobin Road is number one. So he did a little something-something when he was in the CFL playing for the Argonauts. I'm trying to remember some of the other accomplishments that he had, but those are some key ones that you know I can hit on. So, like I said, played in the CFL, but he also played in the AFL. After he got done in the CFL, the AFL came calling. Now this, I'm going to have to double check when I do my edits, but I think, you know, going to this AFL, he's at this point in his like 30s, mid 30s. So he's, he's not a young spring chicken at this point in his career. But after he left the CFL, he went to the AFL and he joined the San Diego Chargers or who is now the LA Chargers but back then, San Diego Chargers. So, yeah. Where's my water? Oh, my water on the floor. Dang, it. A few minutes later. So, yeah, he joined the, the AFL and played with the San Diego Chargers. He was on the short list of being uh, one of the people who was able to win a championship in two different leagues. He won a championship in the NFL, and he won a championship with the San Diego Chargers and the AFL. That was... You know, his key highlight playing with the San Diego Chargers is he won a championship with the Chargers. I think like the first, I believe it was the first year that he stepped on the scene for the Chargers. It was kind of a similar story. Like when he went to the CFL, he completely changed the team around first year. Same with the Chargers. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, when he was with the Chargers, he was also a pro bowler with the Chargers. It's not like he went to the Chargers at an old age and didn't have success. I think they originally got him because they wanted to him to kind of be a bridge for the new quarterback that they had that they were grooming. I mean, he still was that, but it's kind of funny that they brought him in and thinking that that was going to be his purpose. And then the first year, he ends up guiding them to a championship. During the second season that he was with the Chargers, he split time with the quarterback they were trying to groom. But down the stretch, when it came to, okay, we're in a good position to uh, try to go ahead and go for another championship, um, they rode Tobin Road all the way uh, after a while. I can't remember who they lost to. 
I think they may have actually been in a championship, but they lost. So they got really close to getting a second championship. By the way, there's some people that may enjoy this fact. The first championship that they won when he stepped on the scene with the Chargers, they won against the New England Patriots. It seems like there's kind of a universal, I hate the Patriots world out there. It's not many fans of just football that I know. I can't think of one that aren't Patriot fans and don't mind the team. Patriots fans, y'all listening, I don't know if y'all feel some kind of way, but I'm just, I'm just speaking from my experience. You know, nine times out of ten, people that I see love the Patriots, or you know, oh yeah, I like to watch them play, are Patriots fans. Anybody else outside the Patriots fandom, they have an interesting a uh, few choice words for them that I'm not going to repeat on this uh, channel. Anyways, it's kind of all I have for you all this time around. And one thing I do want to include, the reason why I say he, you know, on paper, he played three seasons. He retired after he ended his stint with the Chargers, I think for about two years. But he came back to play with the Denver Broncos for a couple of games. But after a couple of games, they end up cutting him. And so after he got cut, then he, you know, retired from Gotta incorporate the fact that he played on the Broncos. I mean, it was it was a couple of games, but he did play with the Broncos. So, thank you for tuning in. This has been my play under review part two on Tobin Rotes. Uh, next, oh, no, 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 no. Next week we will have another football junkies video. And in two weeks we will have another video on the latest NFL unappreciated legend. But I hope y'all like this video. Let me know if y'all like this format. Maybe I'll do this again when I'm doing like little mental road trips again. But um, yeah, but thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning. I didn't forget. But um, yeah, play under review and appreciate a legend coming to you again in two weeks. Forget who it is, but you will know in two weeks. Until then, take it easy.